Right, so here we come to the cutting bit. Um, just first of all, I'd just like to show you these. These are different mark making techniques with different tools and methods. Okay, so that one there is where I've painted on some nitromores, left it for five minutes and then scraped it off with a Stanley blade. Likewise with this one, I've just puddled on some um, some nitromores, which is what what would you call that? That's um that's paint stripper, isn't it? So it's a it's caustic soda in a, in a prepare a preparation. So you can get quite painterly effects. These are classic small V gouge marks. These lines here, and you can see the different tonal gradations I'm using. This one is a V gouge. And then also another, a, a, a second stroke with a V gouge to create a different tone. Here, a more broken up one with a V gouge dotted in between each line. And here, with a U gouge or a larger V gouge to create um, a greater tonal gradation. And then here, we've got a shallow U gouge creating marks. That's a U gouge mark as well, just to create random pattern of various different tones and so on, to ex just to to create different textures. Right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with some line work with a V gouge. This is a beauty, um, although I don't like the, can the handles so much. This is a, a file gouge from Switzerland. Um, I'm used to using Lawrence's gouges, but these have got better blades and they're also cheaper. So what I'm going to do is just a little bit of line work, working it from this as a reference. I'm just going to do some fine line work that I can then swell and expand with a narrow U-gouge, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so... The thing is about cutting, right, there's lots to tell you about cutting before I start. First of all, I've got my right hand, is my, is my cutting hand because I'm right handed. My left hand is what's known as your anchor hand, right? Now, I was watching the other day on the internet, somebody telling you how to cut lino, who said, you're going to want to pack some band-aids because you're going to cut yourself a lot. And let me tell you now, if you're doing it right, you never cut yourself. I just couldn't believe that. Anyway, so, right. First things first. Anchor hand. In this case, my left hand, because I'm right-handed. It kind of seems intuitive to pull the block towards the cutting hand, yeah? So you, you hang on to it like this and push it down. And you can see what's going to happen, can't you? You're going you're gonna to stick yourself and you're going to bleed like a stuck pig. Um, so always, always, always keep your anchor hand behind your cutting hand, right? Seems a bit weird um, and takes a bit of getting used to, but you're actually pulling away from your anchor hand. You see, you're cutting away from your anchor hand, right? Bench hooks, that's another thing. Whoever invented those for, for lino cut, those are these funny things where you put the lino up against um, a right angle and cut into that, that's crap. You can't do that because you're constantly moving the block around all the time. So you need the flexibility. This means that your anchor hand is pressing down on the lino the whole time, right? Your cutting hand, first of all, with Western tools, um, the Chinese and the Japanese have got a whole different vibe going on now. I've got time to discuss that. With Western tools, they have a mushroom handle that fits into the heel of the hand like that, right? Yeah. So if you look, you've got the whole, the whole of your arm and uh, your body weight pushing down on this one little tiny point here, right? So it sits there and then you wrap your fingers around it and your index finger goes right to the cutting point. This is so that you can be pressing down with the V-gouge as you're going along. It's the downward pressure is as important as the forward pressure, right? 
So also you're using the whole of your upper body um, as a as a um, as a weight pushing down on this little tiny little V gouge point here. So you've got all of this energy going into this tiny point, which means it's absolutely accurate. You've got to be tense to do this. It doesn't work if you're sort of like, oh, you've got to really like hold your breath and go for it, right? Another thing, keep the keep the uh, the blade very very close to you. Um, I've seen, oh, you can imagine over 20 years of teaching how many different weird ways people have got for holding gouges. I've seen them hold them like this, um, like this, you know, any, anything where you're not absolutely right on top of the shank of the blade is rub. It, it, it just doesn't work because you're losing control it's, and it will give you arthritis before your time as well. So it's a matter of an acute angle to get the V gouge cutting into the surface and then you pull it down quite a bit. I'm pressing with my index finger guiding it with my anchor hand which is also pressing down on the surface going forward and then when you've you've finished with the cut you come up again. Can you see that? Now what I'm doing there is there's a little bit of a surge forward as you go up so that the line is going down in down along and up okay and this is where it gets quite exciting not exciting maybe that's not the word but this is the point right about lino is it is incredibly addictive really 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 very addictive indeed so what happens, uh, I'm making this up as I go along by the way, what I think is happening, Mr Pig's bullshit theories number 25, is that it, there's something about the, the texture and the cutting that it just releases, it feels, it does to me anyway, it just releases endorphins big time. Um, and so after one or two cuts, I always have this problem when I'm demonstrating to students, after one or two cuts, what happens is, is the genie of lino cut takes over my brain and I, I kind of forget where I am. Now, if you don't have any social responsibilities, I've got three children, if you don't have any res social responsibilities, it can manifest itself in this way. You start cutting, uh, once you've done all your prep and everything, which is boring, the boring bit, you start cutting and then you surface wondering why you're A, blind and B, starving and you realise that eight hours have gone by, just like that. That really, uh, that, is, that is for true and, and lots, of, lots of lino cut artists will tell you that, that's exactly what happens, is you just, time is meaningless. I'm starting to get all mystical about this, but I think I think um, I think liner cut might be my religion because something just—it's just all of it's all of it's magical, not just the cutting, the printing, the prep, the whole thing, and the finished result even is is all just so bloody beautiful. It's just uh, yeah. Anyway, so this is it. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting out with a v-gouge. Now I've also missed something quite important which is you're cutting out the <laughs> this is very important in fact <coughs> you're cutting out the areas on the block that are going to be white right every time I teach lino or engraving there's at least one or two people that never get that and they start to cut out the black lines right which are the lines that you keep so you could describe it as um, as drawing with light. That's that's one way that engraving has been uh, described before. Um, think of it as your uh, uh, as, as your drawing with with white on a on a background on a black background rather than black on a white background. That way, you shouldn't go too far wrong. I'm liking this design. I might actually um, I might actually work on this one. 
it's kind of a light relief after working on um, the Palmyra massacre. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing is I'm describing some lines here that are going to be kind of mid-tone. Then what I'm going to do for the sake of this film is I'm going to switch to a narrow U gouge. Uh, one of these little fellas, I'll do the take up with a close up in a minute. This is to swell a line. What that means is, is that you've got a line going along uh, like that and then you're broadening it to make the area, area whiter like there as well. Can you see? Okay, so working up to a lighter tone I've already done the fine V-gouge marks now I'm going to go over them oh yeah with a U-gouge mark it just really just does take you over here we go Now I'm using the V gouge to work into the U gouge marks. Just keep switching between the two. It helps to have if you're I mean I've been doing this since I was a boy, but if you are new to um lino cut could you pass me that piece of lino over there, please, Sarah? It helps to have some waste lino knocking around. Here, can you see what, what this is? This is this is where I've been demonstrating. If you're feeling unconfident, you can just work on a bit of waste, just to see how your tools are behaving. Uh, and this is a good example now to show you some other tools. Um, this is a shallow U gouge. Um, this is a clearing tool, which means you're clearing every an area to make it white. But it's also just makes a lovely large rounded. stipple mark. This is a, a sharper U-gouge, a, um, um, a deep U-gouge, which gives you a line like this. This tool I've had for 30 years. So once you buy a tool, once you buy a good tool, you only cry once because they will last you, they'll see you out, they will. The only gouges that can cash in their chips that need replacing are V gouges because they're an absolute pig to resharpen. Um, and sometimes it's, it, it's worth just buying yourself a new one if they're sort of like 18 quid or something like that. A lot of money, but then you know you will get 10 years worth out of one of these. Um, the rest of the tools you can sharpen yourself. Um, there, so that's that. That's um, a shallow U gouge, a deep U gouge, a very very fine U gouge, a V gouge, and then this clearing tool, another shallow U gouge, which is very big. I've had this one. I've had this one for since 1987. So I can't do the maths for that. That is 30 years, isn't it? Yeah. Um, this too cuts great big random patterns like that, okay? And it's also used for clearing great big areas of white. There you go. 
the point being is that the is that the um, the roller won't be able to get into that space now because it's all it's all it's all been cleared out. So there's nothing there's nothing for the roller to pick up on.